Hey guys, how you doing? This is Brother Bill, and I'm down here by the creek ready to do this devotion. And I hope everybody's doing well. Guys, I'm uh, re-recording this thing because it got cut off. So give me opportunity to shorten it up a little bit because, I, you know, I like to get to talking and stuff. Okay? All right, well, I hope you're well. And I hope your uh, gardens are doing well and your animals are doing well. And I want to say thank you uh, for all of you who have watched in your comments. It really is an encouragement to me. And I'm watching your videos too. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you for, for that. Okay? All right. Well, let's get into this thing. Uncertainty. That's right. Uncertainty. That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, i got only got two little cards here, so hopefully it doesn't take us too long. Uncertainty. Unpredictability. That's what it means. Unreliability. Indecision. Hesitant. Doubt. And wavering. That's right. That's what uncertainty means. Okay. Well, a few years ago, a thing happened. And it affected the entire world. That's right. No one in 8 billion people saw it coming or warned anybody it was coming. No one knew the thing about the thing. That's right. No one saw it coming. There, now, there was lots of questions. There was lots of theories, lots of speculation. But still, no one had real answers that they could agree upon. That's right. Uncertainty. It was a time of uncertainty. And we're still in a time of uncertainty. And here's the thing, God permitted it. He allowed it to happen. That's right. He permitted it. God is sovereign. He knows all things. And he did permit it to happen. Well, might be a question for God one day. But Jesus told us pestilences and things like this would come upon the earth, famines, earthquakes, all those things, rumors of wars, wars, and all that. And those are only the beginning of sorrows. Okay. Well, those things are going to increase just before the Son of Man comes. So we need to be ready. Uh, for it, just to expect those kind of things. I mean, what did we really think that the world would be like before he comes? Well, God did permit it. And God did uh, allow these things to come upon the earth. And Satan used them. That's right, Satan used them. He used this thing. And how clever of our enemy to use not only fear, but its strongest form. The strongest form of fear is the unknown. That's right. He used the unknown against the human race. He used uncertainty, a state of mind, and not knowing. That's right. And he knows this because our minds are vulnerable to it. And it causes anxiety disorders and panic attacks with uh, this heavy weight, this burdensome weight of worry on our minds that he knows that we're not able to carry. Well, there's a reason that many fell into uncertainty, okay, because they really wasn't sure even of their own lives or the life after this life. There's a lot of uncertainty there, uncertainty. Okay, well, we're going to look at this thing in Acts chapter 17. Why Acts 17? Because of what's happening here. Acts chapter 17, Paul, the Apostle Paul, our great brother there, he was conducted by Timothy and Cyrus. That means they, was brought, they brought him to this place called Athens. Now, I'm going to paraphrase for time. Now, this name Athens is important for us to see because of its name meaning. It means uncertainty. Athens means uncertainty, okay? And it says that when they brought Paul to Athens, this place of uncertainty, Paul wasn't uncertain. He was just in a place of uncertainty, okay? So they brought him there, and while Paul was waiting there in this place called Athens, uncertainty, uh, that he, his spirit, he looked around, and he was looking, and his spirit was moved and grieved within him, it was stirred up because the whole city was given over to idolatry. That's right. Now, there's a parallel here. There's a reason for uncertainty, and Paul is going to explain. One of those things is, is that they were given over to idolatry. That's right. There was idol worshipers, everything. This was a place that was called uh, polytheists. That means many gods or pantheists. Everything, everything. The grass was a god, the creek was a god, everything was a god. They had an idol built to this thing. And, and so Paul was seeing these things. They worshipped everything in this place, this place of uncertainty. Okay? And it says here that while he was there, that he was reasoning with those in the synagogue. That's his people, the Hebrews, the Jews. And Paul would go into this synagogue there. And he would take the old books, the, the old covenant there, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, all the, the Torah and the Psalms and the prophets, and he would go over these things and he was explaining to his people and pointing them to Jesus through these scriptures. So that's what it means there while he was disputing or reasoning with them in the synagogue. And then while he was there also, there was philosophers that would come and speak to him 
and talk to him about this message that he had. There was two specific groups there, the Epicurians and the Stoics. Well, the Epicurians believe that do all things, live your best life now. We still have some Epicurians here today. Uh, that's what they do. They live their best life now. It's all about them and pleasures and God's, uh, uh, ble God bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. That's what they're saying. And it's never about anyone else. It's I am. I am good. I am awesome. I am great. I am blessed. It's, like, it's self-worship. That's the Epicurians. Pleasures of this life. Storing up for yourself these great wealth and this great riches and have the best in this life. Well, if this is our best life now, then we had no hope for one after this. Let them have those things. Don't be caught up into that stuff. But the Epicurians, that's what they believe. Do what you can. Live your life the best that you can. Seek out all pleasures in this life because there's really nothing to look forward to after. So live it up. That's right. Eat, drink, and be merry. That's right. Well, what about this? And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with the pleasures of this life, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. The Stoics. Well, they were the other extreme. Deny all pleasures of life. Well, God gave us these things to enjoy, right? We love spending time with family and cooking out and, and going on boating trips or vacation. Or those things. God's given us these things to enjoy, right? Well, the Epicureans went to one extreme and the Stoics went to the other, to deny yourself. Well, Paul's talking to these people, okay, and he's talking about one message. And, and they come to Paul and they, they heard this message of Jesus, because this is what it says here. Because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Well, they never heard something like that before, okay? Well, and it says after they heard this message, they, they took him to a place called Areopagus. Areopagus is a place where the older uh, gentleman of the place, uh, of the city, would sit. And they would listen to these people come up and, and, and hear their story of this new thing that they had heard. And they would evaluate it kind of thing. Well, they, they, this wasn't a judgment against Paul. They was just bringing him to this place that he could hear, or that they could hear what he was saying. Okay, now listen, it says here that they may know of this new doctrine that Paul is talking about. Everything is all about the new thing. Okay, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. And we would know, therefore, what these things mean. Okay? That's right. Now listen to what Paul says. For all the Athenians, all them of uncertainty. See, there, this is tying in together. For all of those that are in uncertainty and strangers, which were there spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear of some new thing. You know, you see it everywhere you go. Uh, marketers love the phone, the phone that I'm recording on. There's always, you buy the phone, and before you leave, they have another new one behind it, or already in the works behind that one. It's always about the new thing, and there's no, one, there's no certain, uh, certainty in that, because it, it's going to change. It's constantly uh, moving. It's constantly moving. There's always a, something new. But notice that uh, this, what they hear, what they hear, they wanted to hear something new. They'd never heard something like this, okay? And that's what Paul was teaching. But there's, when our hope is in the, the next new thing, it's uncertain. Why? Because we know there's a next new thing. So you can only put your hope into something temporarily. This grass, if I put my hope in this grass here, it, if I just laid it out here within 24 hours, this grass is just going to fade away. It's going to die. So I have to get another piece of grass. This is another. And it's a constant thing. It's uncertain. That's right. Well, Paul was in his place of uncertainty. He's preaching Jesus and him crucified and raised again. Okay, so he, now listen to this. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, of uncertainty, I perceive in all things that you're too superstitious. Now this is the only time this word is ever mentioned in the Bible, superstitious. And it's a very long Greek word. I think it's 16 letters. Uh, but it typically means religious. You're too religious. You have a form of religion, but you deny the power there. That's what Timothy, Paul is talking to Timothy about. There's a lot of religions out there. There's no power, and it's uncertain. Because you can ask them about, well, what about after this life? And they really have no answer. Well, I hope that I've done this good enough. I hope I've done this quite well. I hope that this is... You see, that's religion. And this is what they were doing. 
In religion, there's no power in it, and, there's, and it's uncertain. I see it all the time on social media. Even believers sometimes. They will post a quote, let's just say, from, from the Bible one day, and then the next day they'll post something else from a Hindu, and then they'll uh, post something else from just maybe an actor, or they'll post something else from something else. That's uncertainty. You can't mix it. No, our, our certainty is in Jesus himself. But Paul's going to explain that here. You men of Athens, you're too superstitious. I perceive. Paul knew that. He understood that. He discerned that in his spirit because he could look and see. He could see the people. They were living in uncertainty. Because he says here, For I passed by and I beheld your devotions, and I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. How clever is Satan to use uncertainty, the unknown, the unknown to deceive. Well, this is well, they wanted to cover all their bases. Well, we have all these many gods. Everything was a god. Everything that they could think of was a god. Okay? And, and so they wanted to cover their bases, so they put out this altar for the unknown god. Just in case. Maybe we missed one. Well, and then Paul goes on to explain. And Paul explains something to them. He's a God that made the world and all the things that therein, seeing that He is Lord of heaven and of earth. He doesn't dwell in temples, neither anything made by hands. Okay, all these things that they built, God was not in those things. No, this is what Paul is explaining. Paul, this man of certainty, talking to these people in a time, in a place of uncertainty. And he says this, Neither is worship with any man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing that he gives life to all. That he is the life giver, God who made all things. This God that you worship ignorantly. That's right. It wasn't derogatory. He's just making a statement. You don't know the God that I serve. That's right. So why so many people in the last three years are falling into... Do they not know? I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But Paul is trying to pull them into this, this place of uncertainty. Okay? This is what come out of that and I'm going to point you to something that could give you some hope. Okay? So he says this, and I'm going to skip on along here. He says that they, now listen, he says that God made with one blood all nations of men. That right, and has determined their times and before appointed their habitation. Why? Because that they should seek after the Lord, if early that they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. God is everywhere. That's right, and God is just waiting on on the people to call out to him. That's right. That's right. That's what he's saying. God is, is not so far away that we can't reach him. No, God is near. And he's come near through his son, Jesus Christ. He made a point to do that. Okay, that is certain. Okay, for in him we live and move and have our being. And certain also of your own poets have, have said, for we are all his creation. Their own poets said that, but they didn't know who the creator was. He uses, Paul is meeting these people where they are in this place of uncertainty. That's right? Okay, now look at this. Now Paul goes on to explain that God is not in gold and silver and all these images that you made. Okay? Now Paul is addressing that issue. This is not God. He's not part of this. Okay? Now he goes on to say something here. He says, In the times of this ignorance God winked at, and he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance, certainty, to all men, in that he has raised him from the dead. Certainty is in Jesus Christ himself raised from the dead. That is certain. That is certain because God has appointed the day that all people, all people, all people that have died will be raised again, one to everlasting life, one to eternal hell. That's right. That's what Paul is addressing here. There is one thing certain, one thing for sure certain, that Jesus Christ was raised again from the dead. And in that he was raised again gives us assurance to all them that believe that we also will be raised and be with him forever. And those who die and are raised, not in him, still yet in their sins. Well, they have an entirely uh, different ending there for them. That's what Paul is saying. This is for all people. That's right, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. That's right. By that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given him assurance. 
and all given assurance unto all men that he raised him from the dead. Paul preached Jesus Christ in him crucified, but not only crucified, but raised again from the dead. That's our assurance. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. All right. So Paul departed from among them. Okay, Paul preached this message. Uh, but listen to this. It says, Howbeit certain men cling to him and believe, among the which was Dionysius. Now Dionysius, you can go look at yourself, he was one of the elders of Areopagus. That's why we're told in Scripture to pray for them. Pray for them in leadership. Well, Paul got one of them. That's right. And I, we don't know how many was there, but he preached this message and one came. And then there was another lady and many others came to him. And they was hearing about Jesus Christ crucified, buried, and raised again. Paul preached the gospel. That is certain. Why is it certain? Because it's an everlasting gospel. That's right. That's what it's called in Revelation when the angel comes through in that day and he's going to be preaching throughout the world the everlasting gospel. That's right. It's an everlasting gospel. Well, there's a lot of folks out there that have fallen into uncertainty. We're coming up upon a time of financial issues here soon. People haven't recognized it yet, don't know why. But it's here, and it'll be eventually manifest itself. And it'll be a time of uncertainty. There's, going, there's food issues out there. There's famines all over the world. And folks, there's other nations besides the United States. We have a tendency here in the Western society to look at the whole world through our own lens. If these things are going on here in a free country, in a free nation, how much more so are they going on those that are not? Well, we got to look at the bigger picture. There's a lot of uncertainty out there in the world. A lot of people are, are worshiping a God that they don't even know. They worship Him as Jesus. And many of them, they call Him Jesus, but it's not the Jesus of the Bible. It's the Jesus that has conformed to their own image. And that's how come they're always being let down and there's, no, nothing, uns, there's nothing certain that they can hope for. Uh, it's all about them. It's all about pleasing me. You know, in the thing, God shut down a whole lot of, used that to shut down a lot of things, a lot of idols. God shut down entertainment. People could, just couldn't go. They just couldn't go to be entertained. They couldn't go to the ballparks. They couldn't go to the ball fields. They couldn't go do the things uh, that entertained them. Entertainment was their God. And God shut the, that down. There was nothing certain about entertainment. We couldn't go. Go here. Go there. The, the idol of go. That's right. The idol of go. Just going to go. Just because you got to be moved. Why? Because there's no stability in their lives. They just got to keep moving. They're restless. And, and that in itself can be an idol. But look at this thing. Look at yourself. I examined myself. And there's so many things I looked at. What have I set before God, the things that I, I put my hope and faith in? I really looked at it. I really don't have a lot of faith and hope into this world. I know because I know there's a greater coming, and I know whom I believe, just as you have. Well, he is certain, and he, he is certain to raise us again if worse come to worse and, and, and we leave this, this life. We know one day that when he returns, he's going to raise us just by the speaking of his voice. Come up. And we got that thing for sure. We know that we're going to be with him forever. That is certain. Well, the world doesn't know that. They live in a time of the unknown. They just don't know. They're not sure. So they're going from the next new thing to the next new thing. Well, this gospel is an everlasting gospel, like I said. And he's given all of us the assurance that if we would preach Jesus, that he would also confess our name before the Father in heaven. That's right, go about preaching Jesus and trying to help as many people as we can along the way. It's not up to us if they believe, just like Paul, the great apostle. Some believed, some did. He wasn't concerned with that. He, sure, he had compassion, but he, could, he had to move forward, continuing to preach this same message to them that would hear and believe, that they would have the hope that we have also. Well, folks, it doesn't matter what happens out here. Just be encouraged this. If you're a child of God, you're born again of His Spirit, and His Spirit dwells in you, you have been saved, forgiven. He doesn't take that away. No, you still have the Spirit of God. You're still forgiven. Just look to Him in these times of struggle and try to, to do the, your best part in what He's given you to do. And just take courage. You are certainly to be raised again one day to be with Him. Well, that sure is a, an assurance for me. And I hope it is for you. 
and let's just try to reach as many as we can while we're still here we've been given that opportunity and y'all take care out there and until next time uh, just know that God loves you we love you and we appreciate you watching our videos and uh, me and Grace will get something out here soon no sense in me doing canning videos and stuff like that there's a lot better videos out there than I can put together uh, but we're just trying to keep you up folks uh, on what we're doing here and we're enjoying the time God's given us so until next time uh, y'all take care out there and I hope you're doing well just be certain uh, we can be certain in Jesus and what he has said and what he's done okay so until next time we'll see you again